The optimal patients to start serafinib with are patients that have been included in the clinical trial that have looked at the efficacy of serafinib in HCC, which means the patient should be similar, uh, should fulfill the inclusion criteria of the STORM uh, study, for example. These are in general patients that are not candidates for local therapies because they have more advanced disease. They should have a good liver function. In general, they have vascular invasion and they might also have um, liver uh, extrahepatic metastases. So these are probably the most the patients that benefit the most from systemic therapy with um, sorafenib. Hepatocellular carcinoma uh, is a molecularly very diverse disease. Uh, we know from the clinical aspect that it is very hypervascular. We see that on imaging. Uh, we talked about how chemoembolization, essentially an antivascular therapy, plays a very important role. And we know that Elevated levels of the vascular endothelial growth factor can be correlated with poor outcomes in liver cancer. So many of the systemic drugs that have been looked at in liver cancer have had some component of antiangiogenic effect, such as targeting the VEGF receptor, VEGF itself, or even uh, the fibroblast growth factor receptor. So serafinib is a multi-kinase uh, inhibitor uh, that has activity against the VEGF receptor, uh, PDGFR, RAF kinase. Uh, I think many of us feel that the most important component of this mix is probably its effect on the VEGF receptor, though we don't, we don't exactly know for sure. It is a multi-kinase inhibitor. It does have vascular endothelial growth factor associated toxicities, toxicities we see when we block VEGF, such as hypertension. It's generally fairly mild in the liver cancer population, but easily managed with antihypertensives if needed. Probably the two most common uh, side effects we see are uh, GI toxicity, such as diarrhea, and hand-foot skin reaction. Diarrhea can generally be managed with Imodium, uh, dose reductions and dose holds as indicated, uh, having patients uh, keep well hydrated, the hand-foot skin syndrome, again, can be very mild, just some redness on the palms of the hands or on the soles of the feet, or it can be significant with blisters and thick callus. Uh, often the, the prophylactic use of urea-based creams can minimize this, uh, telling patients to wear uh, thick-soled uh, socks and comfortable shoes can, eliminate, can limit the irritation on the feet. And again, often patients may need a break or a dose reduction at times. There's data to suggest that to get the optimal benefit from a drug like serafinib is keeping patients on a prescribed dose for some period of time. And obviously what will dictate that is how well the patient is tolerating it. Uh, the prescribed starting dose with serafinib is 400 milligrams twice a day. I think educating a patient up front uh, to keep in touch with the, the office should they have any early side effects. They should know to have Imodium at home should they have GI problems. Giving them prophylactically urea-based cream or to, again, having them call the office should they start having skin problems. It is an oral drug, but it is an anti-cancer drug and it has well-known side effects. So typically I think seeing patients within two weeks of starting the drug is important to mitigate any toxicities early. Uh, should a patient need a dose reduction, that reduction would be from 400 milligrams twice a day to 400 milligrams each day, and then the next reduction would be 400 milligrams every other day before uh, you stop the drug completely. Uh, sometimes it takes, I think, patients a while to get used to the side effects. There is some, I think, cooling down of the side effects over time, so if a patient does experience a dose reduction, uh, it is not unreasonable to re-escalate once things are stable and under control. Uh, you know, in general, I think the toxicities are manageable if we're proactive about them. If we give a patient a prescription and say, come back in six weeks, those are patients will get into trouble. So I, th I think you do need to see patients regularly. Response to therapy with sorafenib is completely different from measuring response to therapy with TASE. Again, as we have discussed before in TASE, we are looking for 
a partial response, complete response, and we are not satisfied with a stable disease. This is a little, little bit different with the systemic therapies we have available at, at the moment because we know we can't really achieve a partial response in most patients. So the main aim um, we have is to have a stable disease, have a good liver function and have a stable um, performance status in our patients. How do we measure response in clinical, daily clinical practice? Is most often that we do CT scans every two to three months. And we, when we do the evaluation, we most often use RESIST. In clinical trials, we would also use M-RESIST to have a better idea whether we get a partial response or not. But I think for daily use, RESIST would be okay. And as long as we have stable disease, we would continue um, with the systemic therapy.